Ah, ladies and gentlemen, we are living in end times because apparently we're in that Japanese robots. I cannot say this word on YouTube. Apparently, Japanese four Japanese robots sent 29 scientists to heaven. This is like one of those oh shit, oh, shit. kind of moment right now. I want to get into the story. Drop a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're brand new, man, because this is insane. Let's roll. Hello there. So. A while ago, I uploaded a video talking about the allegations made by the conspiracy theorist Linda Moulton Howe on a terrifying incident that took place in a Japanese robotics lab where four autonomous robots killed 29 scientists before they could finally shut them down by dismantling them completely. At a top robotics company in Japan this week, four robots being developed for military applications killed 29 humans in the lab. And they did it by shooting what he called metal bullets. Bruh. I didn't know there was any other kind. The scariest part is that lab workers deactivated two of the robots, took apart the third, but the fourth robot began restoring itself and somehow connected to an orbiting satellite to download information. Oh shit! Oh shit, oh, shit bro, damn, damn! This is like Detroit become human! If you have played Detroit Become Human, that's crazy! So you're telling me that the robot came to life and started like downloading data, and started connecting to the satellite and started... I mean, like, bro, like... Oh shit! Oh shit! I gotta... That's crazy, bro. ...about how to rebuild itself even more strongly than before. And this this next sentence, is a, this is a quote. I'm, I'm writing this down. I've been doing this for years. This is serious <laughs> Linda. But you're never going to hear about this in the news. A lot of viewers were skeptical while others did not rule out the possibility of this actually happening. So, I found this clip from an interview she did after- w, w if you believe it, L if you don't. We have more, we have Elon Musk as well, so let's see. After the fact, where she explains in detail how she got this information and who was the whistleblower that actually conveyed this news to her in the first place. Oh snap. In the clip I'm about to show you, she also talks about how Elon Musk knew about these kinds of experiments and how he warned the world before this incident even happened. July, August of 2017. In the prior year, okay. Be, like pump the brakes for a second, okay? Because the 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 thing the thing here is that yep, Elon Musk has warned us like a long time ago. He did say some stuff that is very reasonable, very logical stuff, right? Like one day they can turn on us. Something, I mean, that's science fiction. We have seen that in movies. We have seen that in games, and that's something that we all uh, can actually come to, right? That's one of the theories. That's one of the speculation. That's one of the the possibilities. Something that we can all agree on it can be a possibility that's kind of like logical Bruh. and that's what elon musk said and this basically happened if this to be if we are to believe this this apparently happened back in 2017 and elon musk if i'm i think he's gonna tell us the date but if i have to take a guess elon musk warned us about that situation after so i'm like a little bit sus man like did he knew that that's kind of like what he's trying to say i had been communicating with uh, a Marine who had retired from the Marines but was working special forces and he had been communicating to me about a number of ET related revelations secrets that he and a team of special forces were involved with and so he oh, had shit. kept in touch with me usually through short texts or every once in a while he would call and say uh, you're tapped uh, I'm tapped I'm only going to speak for and it would be like 30 seconds or a minute and then hang up and we, I understood why and that was what we were doing. Well, uh, it was in uh, August of 2017. The phone rang, I picked it up. I knew his voice. Uh, can't stay on the line long, but I want you to know that this week, which would have been uh, the, I think second week of August 2017, in Japan, 29 humans were killed in a laboratory that was producing militarized robots by the Japanese for warfare. Damn. And then he went on to explain what he had learned because they're in these units that something like that that would happen They would receive information and Yo, pump, pump the brakes pump the brakes the fact that she says Japanese Japanese were making the robots all of a sudden it kind of Makes it believable Bruh. because Japanese they got like 500 IQ man those they got like chips down there uh, And what not? I mean damn I know I'm kind of confusing this with Chinese as well But 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 man Japanese they are 500 IQ only they can come out with something like that bro Said that the story was the four militarized robots were being made to be autonomous warriors and that They don't know why but the four rebelled or acted autonomously and as they acted autonomously they killed 29 humans in this lab 
And the, whoever was left on the human side began pulling, this is the way he said, they began pulling the robots apart. They got two of them completely disassembled. We're working on the third, and then the uh, analysis later was what happened with the fourth. The fourth was communicating with a satellite Bruh. that they were teaching these militarized robots how to communicate with the satellites to get information Bruh. on missions. And that the fourth robot was now extending up to the satellite and was searching for information about how to make itself stronger <laughs> to take on, apparently, the remaining humans. What did they do exactly to that fourth? I don't know, but I understand they took it apart. Would they ever put them back together? So now, we're up to a point in August of 27. Bro, like, if, if, you, <laughs> if you put them again, bro, like, I, I would have to be like, Really, nigga? Come on, son, like, that cannot hey, yo, be. what the f <laughs> They cannot put them back again, dude. Like, that's gonna be some crazy, some, I gotta drop one of these, bro, right. here, bro. 17, where I'm hearing a story that is shocking and, uh, uh, I, I would say is like a warning that hits you out of the blue that if in August of 2017 four militarized robots being taught to be autonomous could do that in a lab it made Elon Musk only uh, two months before in June at the oh, Rhode snap. Island Governors Association meeting there were 30, 33 governors from the United States and Elon Musk was one of the invited speakers and when they sat him down in a chair and they started asking him his perspective as being head of Tesla and X of SpaceX he said, I think that the greatest problem that scares me the most is artificial intelligence. And he said oh, statements shit. like, people don't understand that the robots, they are not going to need sleep. They're not yeah. going to need sick days. Facts. They're going to be able to do everything better, Facts. faster, more efficiently, Facts. and smarter than humans. And then he went on and he said, I am convinced that artificial intelligence right now is an existential threat to this planet. Damn. The meeting she mentioned in the clip was the National Governors Facts. Association I meeting, agree, or the NGA, where the governors of 55 states meet twice a year to discuss issues of national and state importance and to develop policy initiatives that address the most pressing issues facing the states. The meeting also provides an opportunity for governors to meet with representatives from the federal government and the private sector. In 2017, Elon Musk attended the NGA meeting and had an hour-long interview where he expressed his opinion on several subjects including artificial intelligence. Somebody asked yeah. me to ask you this. We, we talked about work. So this was apparently just two months, two months before. So he clearly knew something. I mean, even if he did not, he's talking from experience. He's talking from whether you like the guy or not. I mean, back in 2017, he was kind of actually really right. liked. But now with all the Twitter stuff and that the stuff that's going around, either you like him, either you don't or like him, okay? But let's put that aside. Let's be unbiased on the situation. This man clearly knows a lot more than you and me, right? All of us combined, basically. He works for the stuff like that. He has a lot more experience with the AI. And if he says, something you you should not believe everything right like no matter who says it you should not believe everything what anyone says but you should actually take that into account and uh, if a guy like elon musk was talking stuff like that and now we're figuring out that it was two months before that if that information is really legit he was talking about stuff like that just two months prior i mean some some bad. there is some bad. today but they asked me are robots going to take our jobs everybody's jobs in the future or how, how much do you see artificial intelligence coming into the, the workplace. Um, Pretty much. Well, first of all, I, I think on the artificial intelligence front, um, you know, I, I have exposure to the very, very most cutting edge um, AI, um, uh, and I think people should be really concerned about it. Um, I keep sounding the alarm bell, but you know, until people see like robots going down the street killing people, like, they don't know how to react, you know, because it seems so ethereal. Um, and um, I think we should be really concerned about AI, and I think we should... Damn. This, AI is a rare case where I think we need to be proactive in regulation instead of reactive. Um, because I think by the time we are reactive in AI regulation, it's too late. Right. Um, that, that's facts though, right? Because normally the way regulations works, uh, works is that once something once something bad happens right that's when they will be like okay you know that happened they will conduct studies on that they will write papers write articles then there will be protests then people will some people will be for it some people will be against it that will create another divide and then you know they will talk with the regulators they will present the case and then everybody would have to agree there will be a riot there will be people in protest there will be people for it against it and there's just so much bull squash like that and then if we're lucky then the bill 
still is gonna pass but let's be real if robots comes out tomorrow and start killing people start killing everyone then i guess every then they're not gonna be taking into account all those protests protests right. right they're gonna be like oh shit we gotta oh 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 shit we gotta start this immediately but by that point it will be too late and that's gonna ride because let's be real ai is gonna be self-learned and the, the the fact that we are this advance in technology this early on it's like what 2023 right now and this was 2017 i'm pretty certain the ai is really advanced like motherfuckers out there making robots and shiza like that so by the time regulation kicks in it's gonna be too late if they do not take precaution uh measures right now precaution is better than cure normally the way regulations are set up is that a whole bunch of bad things happen there's a public outcry the, the, and then after many years, a regulatory agency set up to regulate that industry. Um, and there's a bunch of- Dude, I, no cap, I did not, I believe I seen this interview years and years ago, but I was not anticipating that he was basically gonna say what I said. Like, I, I, I'm not, Bruh. not capping, I'm not Stop capping. The cap. I did not watch this before, I did not, I'm watching it live, dead ass, dead ass. Opposition from companies who don't like being told what to do by regulators. Um, anyway, it takes forever. Um, that, you know, that in the past ha has been bad, but not um, something which represented a, uh, you know, a fundamental risk to the existence of civilization. AI mm -hmm. is a fundamental risk to the existence of human civilization. Um, in a way that car accidents, uh, airplane crashes, um, faulty drugs, uh, or bad food were, were not. They were, not yeah. they, they were harmful to, to uh, a set of individuals within society, of course, but they were not harmful to society as a whole. Um, AI is a fundamental existential risk for human civilization. And I don't think people fully appreciate that. Um, you know, it's not, it's not fun being regulated. It's not, you know, uh, it'd be pretty irksome. But, uh, you know, in the car business, you know, we get regulated uh, by Department of Transport, by EPA, and a bunch of others. Um, and then there's regulatory agencies in every, every country. You know, in, the, in space, the, we get regulated by FAA. Um, and, um, Damn. But, but, you know, if you ask the average person, hey, you wanna, do you want to get rid of the FAA? Um, and just, like, Take a, take a chance on manufacturers not cutting corners in the aircraft because of, you know, profits were down that quarter. Uh, I was like, yeah. oh, hell no. Um, <laughs> well, uh, hell no. That sounds terrible. <laughs> oh, shit. So, um, you know. But ladies and gentlemen, click on this video on the screen. This is some of the craziest video ever. This guy claims that he was in the year 2027 and the human civilization was gone. Click on it or click the video on the left, either one, and I will see you right there.